Hello, today I'm going to show you how to create a simple web chat app with WebSockets. So for example, I'll chat here, hello, and it sends also to other browser window that is connected to WebSocket server, and I can respond with hi, and it sends also back here. As always, please click the like button, and now let's jump into the code. So we start with backend by installing WebSockets. So I will open my terminal and do yarn add WebSockets, WS. Now when this is done, I will go to my package JSON and I will change here type to module so I can do dynamic imports in my files. So now new file and I will call this one server.js and this will be a start point for our backend application. And we start by importing WebSockets. So let's do import WebSocket server from WS from WebSockets. Now we can define our server so const WebSocket server equals new WebSocket server. And here we will just define port to 8080. Next thing is that we want to handle if someone connects to our WebSocket server. So WebSocket server on connection. And here we get a client. And the client is someone with web browser that connects to our server. So when we have a client connecting to our WebSocket server, what do we want to do? We want to know when this client sends a message. So we can do client on and here message. And here we have the message of that client. But we also have information that if this message is binary. So it's binary because we'll need it later. Okay, so if a client sends a message, what do we want to do? We want to send this message to all other clients connected to our WebSocket server. So to do this, we just do WebSocket server that clients, and this is an object of set, not an array. So I want to first convert it to an array so I can do some array functions on this. So I'll do like this, and now it's an array of clients. All right, so if a client sends a message, what do we want to do with clients? We want to send the same message to all clients except this one. So first I need to exclude this client from all clients. So I will do filter and with each client inside our clients array, I want to check if that client is different than the client that sends the message. Then what do we want to do? We want to send this message to all other clients. So for each, for each client, we want to send this message. But the problem is that this message can be binary. So let's first check it. So is binary. And if it's binary, let's send message to string. Otherwise, just message like this. And that's all for our backend. Now for the front end, I will just create a simple file here called index.html. And here I will just add some HTML5 like this. All right, and now what do we do here? We need some place to display our messages. So let's do div with ID messages. And we need a simple form with an, with an input here to send the message. And let's just add placeholder of your message. And we need some JavaScript that will handle displaying and sending the messages. So we'll put this JavaScript here. And later for styling, I will also add link to styles that will be styles.css. And I will put this file here for later, styles.css. All right, now let's open this in our browser to see how it looks like. So as you can see, we have just a simple input for message and we have this div for messages somewhere here at the top. So now what do we want to do in our JavaScript? First, we want to connect to our WebSocket server. So let's start our server by running node server.js. And now our server is running and let's connect here in our front end. So const ws new WebSocket and the URL will be ws and localhost and our port 88. So after we connect to our WebSocket server, we want to know when someone sends a message to us. So we'll do WebSocket add event listener, and we want to listen on message event. And then with this event, we want to display this message. So a message event contains data, and this is a blob object that we want to transfer to text. And 
this returns a promise so we need to run then and here inside we get our text and with this text we want to display it in our messages so i will put a new function for this function show message with our text and we want to also put information inside messages if it's mine or not so is mine and default will be false so we can style it differently depending on if it's my message or it's not my message. So here to display a message, I want to put this text inside messages with some prettier divs and classes. So to do this, I will do a document, get element by the messages, and then I want to update the HTML inside div messages. And I want to add new HTML. So I will do plus equals. So this means that div messages will get an old value that it already has, the old HTML that is already inside, plus the new stuff that is here on the right side. So here I will put some HTML, so I will use those. And here I will create a new div with class name of message row like this. And inside message row, I will add a prettier bubble like this. And here inside I will put our text and I will just format this a little better. And we want to also add some classes depending if it's my message or it's not. So here I will put is mine. And if it's mine, I want to add mine class. Otherwise I want to add theirs like this. And now we can use this function here to show incoming messages. So show message text, and we can say that here is false because it's not our message. But this is the default, so we can remove it like this. And we don't even need this whole part because it's just one param and it's the same for this function. So we can do just show message. All right, so we can now receive messages and show them in a div that we don't see now. But the next thing is that we want to be able to send messages. So here we have an form with an input. And when someone submits this form, we want to take the value of this input and we want to send it to our WebSocket server. So let's do this now. So document, query selector, and here we want to get inside our form. And we want to change the behavior of submitting the form. So I will do it on submit. And here we will just register our function for this. It will get an event object. And with this event, the first thing is that we want to run prevent default. So we will not send this input information as a default behavior of form, but instead we want to send it to our WebSocket server. That's why I'm using this prevent default. All right, so now I need the value of my input. So I will just get my input here, input equals document query selector input. And now I want to send value from, from the input to our WebSocket server. So WebSocket, send, and here input that value. Now when it's sent, we want to show it inside our messages and we can use our show message function here. So let's do show message. And here we just do input value again. And here we put true because it's our message. So we can add some mind class to our message. And the last thing that after we send the message and we show it, we want to clear this input so we can send more messages later. So we just do input that value equals an empty string. All right, now let's test it. Let's do test, enter, and we get the message. Now I'll open a second window. Let's open this one here. Now let's test hello one, and it shows the message here and also inside our other window. Okay, now let's try hello back and it shows also on both windows. Okay, now let's add some styling so it will look better. Let's go inside our style CSS and now let's try add some iMessage like theme. So first let's do body and let's add some dark background color. So background color and here we'll add 222, two, two, so almost dark. And the color of the text will be white by default. Yeah, like this. Now I want to get our form to the bottom. So form position will be fixed and bottom will be zero left zero right will be also zero and i will add some padding of let's say 20 pixels let's refresh yeah 
now we have our input at the bottom now let's start our input so input will have a border of one pixel solid 555 so a little lighter than the background and the background color of the input will be transparent next we need to make this a uh, input width of 100 percent yeah like this and let's also add some padding of let's say 10 pixels and some border radius to make the corners rounded of 20 pixels now let's refresh yeah now it's much better but as you can see it gets outside of the browser and that's why we need to do some css reset here so we do box sizing border box and this will fix our input so the calculation of the width will be by border right so uh, we have our input and now we want to style our messages so let's see how it looks like the text inside the input is black but should be white so let's do color white yeah now it's better now let's style our messages because if i send something here it just white text so to style it i want to style message row and the bubble so let's first style our bubble of the message and it will have a rounded corners so border radius of let's say 20 pixels and we need some background color so it will be something some corners around background color the default will be dark gray so let's say 444 we need some margin so let's do margin for pixels we need also some padding so from the top let's say five pixels and from the side let's say 10 now let's see how it looks like yeah but we want to take it just a little of space so let's do display inline block yeah now this message should be the default for others messages but not for mine for my messages i want this bubble to be blue and be on the right side so i will do message row dot mine and here i will add text align right and also message row of mine the bubble should be blue so background color should be i have prepared a pretty blue color here zero seven c right now let's test how my message looks like test and it's blue on this side now i will also send from another window test two yeah and it works so that's all for today don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one have a nice day and see you in the next one